Okay, let me get comfortable because I have very exciting news. We are moving house. Excited to be able to share this news, you don't understand. We are beyond excited, but let me tell you that this has been a process. There's such a lot that's been happening behind the scenes, and let me start from the beginning. So, today is the 15th of November 2020. So, Jas and I started looking at houses towards the end of 2018 such a long time ago. We weren't proactive then, we were literally just looking on Rightmove, looking on Zoopla, on the apps, just seeing what was available, seeing what we could afford, and just stuff like that. And we did book a few viewings, but we just didn't really know what we were doing. And then last year, that's when we properly started looking for houses. And it was a really tricky one because Jas spent like probably more than six to nine months of the year traveling. He was working abroad Monday to Thursday, and then he'd be home Thursday night to Sunday night. And I was traveling with him a lot of the time, especially when he was in Dublin. And so I would literally be calling estate agents, looking at properties online, and booking as many viewings as I could for Saturday, because that was the one day that we could see properties. You can't view properties on a Sunday in the UK. I don't know about elsewhere. And so it was really tough. And that is actually when I kind of stopped weekly vlogging, because I had nothing to really share. So pretty much every Saturday we were looking at houses and we must have seen like over 75, maybe 100 houses. I hear about people that are like walking into their second house they viewed and they're like, this is the one. And I can't even imagine that because we saw so many houses. I think also when you live in London, or I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong if you live in London, there are so many areas to pick from and neither of our families are from London. So it wasn't a case of we need to stay in this area because we want to be close to family or we grew up here or whatever. We could move anywhere we wanted to and we kind of had three different areas that we were looking in and there was one that we really liked but we, we just couldn't afford but we're still just trying. There was one that was like our middle ground which is where we're moving to and there was one that was a bit more affordable but we didn't really want to live there and so I'm glad that didn't happen. But anyway, we found this house, it, oh just, I'm just, I don't even know where to start with this video. It's totally not planned. I'm literally just sitting here. So the house we're buying, we initially saw in January this year, right before the pandemic. And at the time, we kind of dismissed it because there's a few things that we weren't happy with at that time and we just didn't even think about it. And then the pandemic hit, the property market shut down. I mean, life shut down we were in a lockdown and as we were coming out of lockdown the property market started opening up but house prices started dropping because the property market was crashing or whatever and this particular house that we'd seen i was like oh it's gone down in price because the first time we saw it, it was also a bit over our budget and so we were like we don't want to go over our budget and also not be happy with x y and z but because this house was now within our budget because it had dropped in price we were like oh let's just go and see it again with fresh eyes and just like see because we haven't seen any properties for like how long we're in lockdown for like four five months i don't even know so we went to see this house in june i'm now filming this in november and we haven't moved and we actually got really lucky because I'd booked to see a house nearby in the evening. I called the estate agent for this house and I was like, can I book an, like an appointment for this evening? Because it's where we're moving to is not that close to us. It's about half an hour away. So we were constantly going back and forth all the time. So I wanted to try and book as many viewings as close together as possible to save us traveling back and forth. And the estate agent came back to me and said, well, well, we're closed at this time and like we can't send somebody out, but the vendor's happy for you to just go and see the house without us present. So we were like, this is great. I mean, this is ideally what you want because if you can get on good terms with the vendor, that I just think that's really important. And having been an estate agent myself, you just they're just so annoying and i now understand why estate agents get so much hate i never really got it at first so we went back to see this house and we saw it with fresh eyes and we actually really liked it and we were like oh like why did we dismiss this in the first place and i think it's also the fact that it was now within our budget that kind of sweetened the deal a little bit <laughs> so that evening we got home and we would swapped phone numbers with the vendor because she was really nice and that was a really good shout also and so we were just like, this is the one, we just have to go for it. Like literally it's now or never, like how long are we gonna be looking for? I had a notebook that I used to take to all viewings and I had a list of every single house that we saw, all the pros and all the cons. And 
yes there are a few cons nothing is ever perfect but we just really like the house so we went home that evening called her up like literally two hours later put an offer in and i think it was that night or maybe the following day she accepted we went back and forth a little bit because in the uk you offer a little bit less I mean, you can offer asking price, but generally you go down a little bit. Or in England, I should say. So I think in Scotland you offer more and like, I don't know how it works in other countries. But yeah, so we offered a little bit less and we went back and forth a little bit and she accepted. And we were like, oh my God, this is so exciting. That was the 30th of June, okay? Bearing in mind, this is November, we haven't moved. So as soon as she accepted, we put the wheels in motion, tried to get all our mortgage paperwork together, blah, blah, blah. And then on the 8th of July, we were really holding out for this news. Because of the pandemic and all that's going on in the world at the moment, the government have announced this stamp duty holiday, and that's just to help first-time buyers and people buying residential homes. So you either don't pay stamp duty, which is a huge chunk of money, or you get it for half price if you're not a first time buyer or like a certain, you basically get it discounted. I can't really remember the ins and outs. And so we were like, this is amazing because that would really help us out obviously. So that was all amazing. We thought we had our mortgage in place and we thought that the thing would be quite smooth and go through really quickly, but we were so wrong, <laughs> honestly. Like I think partly because of the pandemic, partly because of the stamp duty holiday and like so many more people buying houses than they ordinarily would have and also because i'm self-employed we've just had so many problems along the way i mean i can't even i couldn't even put it into one video it's just been an absolute nightmare and it's been more annoying for me because i'm the sort of person that needs to tell everybody everything so straight away like i can't keep a secret and we haven't told any of our friends it was literally just our families that knew or not even like all of our families just a few people so they can fully sympathize with the amount of stress we've had but honestly the mortgage went back and forth then we had to like get a different like mortgage provider and like when you're self-employed like when you're employed you need to just show three months worth of bank statements but when you're self-employed it's three years worth of stuff and it's just an absolute ball ache if i'm honest but because it took so long the three months or the th like for jas the three months of his statement weren't valid because it was more than three months but to keep churning out like more bank statements more like proof of blah 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 and it was just a long ass process and i have to say that we have the dream vendor like she is like Honestly, no, I don't think anybody else would have put up with our shit. She's just been the dream vendor because I think from the moment your offer is accepted, it's roughly about three months until you exchange. And for us, that would have been September or the end of September. And she'd sort of said to us, our new house isn't gonna be ready until October. So do you have somewhere to stay? Like, do you mind delaying? Like you moving in for a bit? And so we were like, yeah, that's fine because we're not renting and we're not in like that much of a rush. This is what we thought at the time, right? And so we said, yeah, that's fine. We're happy to hold on till October, which is when she wanted to move. So we thought we'd have moved in by now, but of course we haven't. And we didn't even have our mortgage offer. Like that that's what took the longest time. It's just been so painful. Our mortgage offer was just such a nightmare. Like I think it's supposed to take weeks, but it's taken us like months and it's just been a bit of a joke. In August, it was our 10 year anniversary. And for some reason I had it in my head. I was like, oh, maybe we'll get it this week. So Jas had that week off work and we, it, ordinarily we would have gone on holiday. That was the plan. And we still could have traveled because lockdown had ended by then, I think. But we just thought no, because we might need to be around for like more mortgage stuff. We were constantly like on the phone, emailing people back and forth, like pretty much every single day. And it's just been so stressful. So we didn't go away and it never even happened that week. But last week we finally got the mortgage offer. It took us two days to really like for it to sink in. We were like, has this actually happened? We actually got it. And we, we didn't even get that excited about it. Cause I was like, mm, like really is it like i just kept going back to my email like is this true because <laughs> it's been so long anyway we've got our mortgage and we're so happy about that jas won't let me get that excited about it yet and tell people because he still thinks that things can go wrong which i guess they can but oh, i don't know so i'm trying to like not get too excited and tell people so i jinx it but also i'm internally very excited so hopefully 
I really, really hope, because we're in the middle of November now, I really, really hope we exchange before Christmas because that will literally be the best Christmas present ever. So the only thing with this house is, and it's a little bit annoying, is it needs some work doing to it. And we knew this right from the beginning. We were always looking at houses that needed a little bit of work doing to them. We would I don't think we would have ever bought a house that was like fully extended and fully done up because then you can't add value to it yourself for when you want to sell in the future. And so we were always looking at houses that were like a little bit shabby, but not like falling apart. We don't want to be like redoing the structure of the house. We don't have that much money, but we knew that we were always going to renovate. And just there's one wall in particular that we really want to knock out just to make it open plan downstairs. And that was always our plan. And so we'd made this offer and set aside a deposit, knowing that we have enough money left over to renovate, ideally before we move in. So because of all the problems we've had with the mortgage, and I mean, it's a long story, so I won't get into it. Instead of putting down, I think 10 to 15% of a deposit, we now have to put down 30%, almost 30%, which is more than double what we were initially gonna put down for the house which means that I'm not 100% sure that we have enough money to renovate, which is really annoying because that was something that we really wanted to do first, just because we thought even if we just knock one wall out and then slowly do the rest over time, at least that wall's gone, you're not living in the house with people knocking down a wall and all the dust and all that sort of stuff, especially because we're both working from home at the moment. So I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. I don't know if we're gonna move in straight away, but at this point, I don't even care. I just want the date and just to know that we have the house and that nothing can now go wrong. That is all I care about at this point. But that is definitely a problem in the foreseeable future that we're still trying to figure out what we're going to do. I mean, the house is fine. It's this is kind of just a first world problem because it's not like it's not like the house is terrible. It's not to our taste, but nothing like it's very rare to ever find something to your taste. It's just not ideal because we were really hoping just to renovate or just wanted to do like the bare minimum which was just knock out a wall and um install a downstairs toilet that was probably the most important thing just because the house currently doesn't have one and that was kind of one of the things on our list of must-haves just because when we have people around in the future not that we can at the moment <laughs> um we don't want everyone going upstairs to have to use the loo and it's obviously not a problem for us to go up and down the stairs but like when my grandparents come and visit or even come and stay that that's like such effort for them to have to go upstairs so that is something that we're still gonna have to try and figure out like we might just have to move in first and then renovate but that's like not a problem but yeah I don't know what else to say this is just so exciting I just can't believe we're finally moving we've lived in this flat for so many years and we've never really like loved the area we don't even really like any of our neighbors they're all just a bit strange and I'm probably the most excited to have a garden and have our own outdoor space. Like, I can't even, not just a tiny balcony. Like, we live in a ground floor flat at the moment and our balcony, which is just behind me, faces a main road and everyone just looks at you and everyone just thinks it's really odd that you're sitting on your balcony on a main road. So it'll be so nice to have a garden, a little bit of privacy. I cannot wait to like, create home content and i'm so excited to like buy all the nice homeware but anyway there's nothing else i can think of i need to share other than the fact that we're both just so excited and we're just praying that we exchange before christmas just because it's been six months five months at this point it'll be six months in a couple of weeks and that's a bit of a joke so keep your fingers crossed for me and i will keep you posted with any updates okay ignore the mess behind me we are literally living in a flat full of cardboard boxes and deliveries at the moment but it is monday the 18th of january we're still in this flat we were really hoping we would have exchanged before christmas 2020 but that hasn't happened there's a huge backlog at the moment that's a whole other story but jas has just informed me that we have a facetime with our solicitors in about 10 minutes which is so weird i think ordinarily at this stage you would meet them face to face or you probably would have done a few times by now but we can't because we're in lockdown number three so we have to facetime them to basically just show them our faces so they can just check that they match the pictures on our driving license 
passport, whatever, photo ID. So I thought that was really funny. So I thought I would just check in and just give you a little life update. Nothing has changed, but I think we're getting close. So I think we're getting really close. Let me know. Oh, okay, I gotta go. I will update you the next time there's something interesting to say. Okay guys, it's the 30th of January today. We still haven't exchanged, but we're very close. Like, two weeks, would you say, Jess? Yep. Very exciting, also very stressful, but also very exciting. We're at the house today. We're a bit early, as always, just waiting in the car. It's absolutely chucking it down. It's sleeting. But we're meeting a builder and an architect just to get an idea of how much some of the renovation work that we want to do will cost. We're not sure that we can afford it, but we thought it's a good idea just to get somebody to come around and give us a quote. Our vendor, like I think I've mentioned multiple times, is really nice. They've now moved out of the house, but she's back here today. So she said that we're more than welcome to come around and bring trades people around. So that was really nice of her. So we're about to go in in like 10, 15 minutes. I don't think she's here yet. And yeah, it's very exciting. Like it doesn't really feel real yet, but we know that it's probably about two weeks away that we'll exchange and hopefully by the end of February, move in potentially, like who knows? But yeah, I just thought I'd give you this little update. I'm not gonna vlog for much longer because we're sat in the car. I don't want our new neighbors to see me vlogging and think I'm really weird, but it's just exciting times and I will be back with another update soon, hopefully. <sighs> back with another update today is friday the 5th of february and we're still in the flat in fact oh can you see all these boxes behind me a few are packed we've started packing a few bits already but we've also started collecting free packing boxes that people give away on facebook and whatever just so we can get a head start on this whole packing. There's more on the other side of this dining table behind the sofa as well. I'm not showing you, it's all such a mess. I hate living like surrounded by boxes, but that's the least of my worries right now. <laughs> so I'm off to the house in about 10 minutes. I'm meeting with two architects. I think I said this in my last update, but we don't have the keys yet. Our vendor is just super nice and she's really happy to just let us in to get builders, architects or whatever trades people in. So then we can get an idea of how much it costs and see whether we can afford to do any work before we move in, which I think is looking very highly unlikely, but that's fine. But two days ago, we had a call from our solicitor and this guy was like mm, everything looks good to go like you should be exchanging tomorrow and we were like what really it's very exciting and then yesterday this was yesterday we should have exchanged i think we called him every hour and the receptionist was always like he's in a meeting he's on the phone he's at lunch he left the office early and we're like what is going on like what is the hold up where is this guy why can't we talk to him and it's been the same all day today i was really hoping that i'd have some good news for when i go to the house at least i could just tell the vendor so that she'll be a little bit satisfied that we're not just wasting her time but who knows i mean I think I'm losing hope at this point. I don't think it'll be this week. I, it would be amazing if by the time I get back from the house at like 6.30 or whatever this evening, Jas will be like, oh, I've spoken to the solicitors and we were exchanging. I just don't see that happening today. I don't know why. I don't know. Hopefully the next time I come on here and give you an update, it'll be something a lot more positive because honestly, I just don't know how much more of this we can take. We've also started telling more family and some friends about the house now, and everyone keeps messaging us like every few weeks, like any updates, anything new to report? And we're just like, no. And obviously they all mean well, and it's really nice for, like, for them to ask and stuff. And a few people have offered us help, and like that's also super nice. At the same time, it's like, please stop asking me because it's just stressing me out even more. Like, I just don't know. Anyway, I'm just gonna go because I'm running late once again to go to the house and I will update you soon. <sighs> oh my God. I'm back with my final update and I'm so excited. Today is Friday the 12th of February. A couple of days ago, we got the phone call. Our solicitors called to say that we finally exchanged contracts and we were just over the moon. I think it was mostly relief followed by excitement, but it was just, we still can't believe it. We're just like, oh my God, has this finally happened? Because this has been a long ass eight months and a very stressful, painful, time consuming, 
overwhelming process like we've had problems every step of the way like i've said and it's finally happening we've exchanged we get the keys next week and the wheels are in motion and like oh i'm just so i slept so well that night honestly for the first time in months i think we both did we went to bed really early and we were just like oh we actually feel so like energized the following day i literally spent 48 hours so we got the call on tuesday evening and the whole of wednesday and yesterday i was on the phone to like removals people cleaning services all the rest of it shopping around for quotes and last night my cousins dropped this through our letterbox and it was just so cute because they live down the road and it's like a moving card and they were like sorry like the card's a bit crap but shops aren't open at the moment and we had to just make do with whatever sainsbury's had and i was just like oh our first moving card it's just so exciting i just cannot even i just feel really overwhelmed by it all and i know that from this point onwards there'll be lots more to stress about that's what everyone has told us but it's a different kind of stress because now why is there a fly there's a fly trying to photo bomb me but i know that it's a different kind of stress like now once we get the keys it's ours like we have a house we own a house so grown up it's just so oh i can't even i can't even get my head around it at the moment it just feels very surreal until we get the keys then it will properly feel like it's our house we haven't celebrated any of the little milestones along the way just because our whole journey has been like littered with problems at every time you think you're like you've made some progress something knocks you back two steps and so we haven't even I mean, we can't go anywhere at the moment we're still in lockdown to celebrate but we haven't even like popped open a bottle of prosecco never mind champagne or ordered a nice takeaway we're like let's just not get too excited so now i think next week onwards we're gonna celebrate i mean i don't know how i don't know i don't care but yeah i can't get my head around it i'm so happy with my little card it's just ah, it just doesn't feel real honestly it's just it's just incredible but anyway i'm gonna stop rabbiting on because i feel like this video is probably like an hour hour and a half long i don't even know i haven't started editing it yet i still i just didn't want to jinx it by starting to edit so yeah i will take you with us on our moving house buying decorating renovating interiors whatever journey i'm gonna end this video here and yeah exciting times to come i hope you guys are all ready for the home content because i feel like that will be my life for the next two years three years i i don't know <sighs> but it's exciting anyway but anyway thanks for watching and i will see you very soon with a moving video a decorating video who knows what video i have no idea what day of the week it is or what we're doing with our lives at the moment so it's all very exciting but don't worry i'll see you soon with a new video <laughs> thanks for watching bye